wake up. Well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. Hi, I'm Tom Bowes, and yes, I have Asperger's syndrome. One in 100 people suffer with an autistic spectrum disorder or an ASD. The Asperger's syndrome affects four specific areas, social, communication, flexibility, thought, and sensory. I can't explain how a brain works with Asperger's, but this is my version of it. It's not, it's not rude, don't worry. <laughs> Imagine that you're in a train station, you're on your own in a train station, stood in the centre, and there's a million people just rushing past really fast. They're all going really, really fast. You look up at the signs of where you want to go, and they keep changing. They don't stop. They constantly change. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what's happening. And you have to make a decision and just do it. This symbolizes my brain. And it is never settled. It's constantly thinking. And therefore, I am always anxious to express myself. You can open your eyes and I'm done. Welcome. Recent studies have shown that Asperger's affects four specific areas. Whatever you ask, ah, I'll tell you. Number one, social. It can be hard for people with Asperger's to interact with other people because they find it hard to establish how people are feeling and they may do things that are inappropriate, like so. Number two, communication. People with Asperger's may find it hard to express themselves or get their point across. They even find it hard to just find out what people's emotions are by their facial expressions. See if you can guess my emotion. If you said anger, you were correct. Number three, flexibility of thought. People with Asperger's need to know what's going to happen next. They need structure and routine. And they find it hard to have their thoughts bended or changed. If they've got an idea in their head, there's no shift in it. <laughs> Number four, sensory. People with Asperger's can cause sensory issues that affect physical contact, lights, strong smells, and even background noise. These issues can occur from things like anxiety. There are the four areas that affect Asperger's syndrome. Remember, Asperger's is not a syndrome, it's a lifestyle. As you can tell from that video, you've got a sort of idea of what Asperger's is, but uh, it's people with Asperger's that really need to get their voices heard. Let's find out what they think. So, how old were you when you were first diagnosed with Asperger's? 15. Uh, six. Uh, I think about the age of four. About 11 or 12. When you were younger, did you, f did you feel any different than, than anyone else? Not any more than anyone else, I didn't think. Not really. Oh yeah, no. definitely, because I mean, before I was diagnosed, I couldn't speak until I was like about um, four or five. Oh yes, I really did. I felt like I was the ultimate outcast. I just uh, noticed a difference uh, uh, immediately. What do you find hardest about social events or being social? Hanging out with loads of people, you know, people I don't know. When there's too many people around, I just freak out a bit, so I don't really like that. In being interviewed is like difficult as well though, so. Um, confronting people. It's slightly easier once you can start, you know, get talking with them. It just kind of flows after that, but it's confronting that's the hardest. Um, I find it very difficult to understand the difference between the real world and the autism world. I know it's just it's, at times I find um, going talking to people and that it, it it can I can I can find it a bit difficult to uh, go, to go to actually go up and have a, have a conversation with somebody. From watching that, you can gather that people with Asperger's have the same issues and similar characteristics. But remember, we are all different, because people with Asperger's obsess over different things and people. Yo, yo, I'm Tom Bowles, and this is my crib. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 miles. This is my, 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 this is my, my room. Why don't you come in and we'll show you the grand tour. Look at it. Very small, isn't it? Um, this is basically where I live, and this is where all the obsessions are. You've got the wall of musical theatre and the Reservoir Dogs poster, which I absolutely love. Um, and there's all the DVDs I've collected for, for years. I tend to obsess over certain things, like it can be either a genre, by an actor, by a filmmaker, by a writer. It can be anything. I see some, I watch one film and I love it, and I find out who's written it or directed it, and I end up buying other films that they've made. A big collection of TV shows, the ones that you'll see. The ones that you can see are all the ones I've completed. There's, there's a lot more I've got, but they're not finished collections. Musicals are a big deal. I've got, um, they, they started off with, it started off with like watching one and then I wanted the CD for that. Then I saw another one that the same guy wrote one, that CD. So I wanted to snowball from there. The ones I've seen are as follows, which is Rocky Horror Show. I've seen Little Shop of Horrors twice. I saw that in New York, Broadway. 
Phantom of the Opera. I've seen Grease. I've seen... I saw Mary Poppins in Brum. Got that on DVD, so I've technically seen that, but not live. Um, I've seen... I saw that hairspray with that cast, exact cast, pretty much. I saw Buddy Holly. Avenue Q. Lem is. Blood Brothers. Lord of the Rings. Saw We Will Rock You in Birmingham as well. The tutors are informed of my Spurges, which is a good and a bad thing, because thank God they don't respond to it in a way that's like, hey, Tom, you're all right. Yes, I'm fine. You won't be in a minute. Uh, I want them to understand, but be discreet and not single me out, because that's very important with people that Spurges. They don't like to be singled out. They don't like to be put on the spot, but I am right now, and I don't like it. And they need contact with the specialist teachers. If that contact is established from day one, there is no prop be, you'll have no problems with the student at all. And they should work together because that will get the best from Asperger's. And it's a team effort to get the best out of people. I'm joined by Sean McCreevy. So Sean, um, obviously you're an experienced teacher and um, you were made aware of Asperger's a while ago. So in your own words, can you explain what you thought the students would be like with Asperger's when you were first made aware? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a few years ago now where I had my, my first student with Asperger's and I, I have to admit I, I knew absolutely nothing about it. And I had two kind of stereotypes in my mind I'm afraid. One was of the, the sort of autistic genius kind of piano playing artistic things that you see on, on TV of, of, uh, of stories of, of, of young kids who've got amazing talents. I was stuck between that stereotype and the other stereotype of, of some hyperactive uh, uncontrollable child and I mixed all that up with ADHD and so on so I didn't really have a clue what Asperger's was but over the last few years I've had quite a few students with Asperger's um, and so I, I know a little bit more about it now but um, I found that really it's all about, it's about the individual and teaching someone with, with Asperger's you can't group all Asperger's together because um, they're all very different people um. Please explain to me what, how you f what you feel it's like to teach students with Asperger's. Um, well, um, again, you can't really generalise because it just depends on the individual person. Um, no, no one person. Everyone's different on the uh, autistic spectrum, so I can't generalise really. But if if I were to say something that was common to all all students with Asperger's that I've taught, maybe it's that um, I have to um, quite often just draw them back into the into the discussion or keep keep them on topic, keep them focused on a task. Something that I admire you for is that you don't change the way you act and treat everyone the same. Do you feel that you change your teaching style for people with Asperger's? Um, not really, not really, because I, I, I think um, I, I've learned that t teaching Asperger's uh, students with Asperger's, the important thing is to break down the task into, into bite-sized chunks. Um, but really, I do that anyway um, with students with or without Asperger's. So um, I haven't really changed my teaching style that much, but I, I do constantly remind myself, am I breaking down the task enough? Sometimes I make the mistake of, of describing a, a project in, in too general, too vague a way, um, and I sometimes lose track of the fact that I haven't kind of broken it down into Lego, into Lego pieces that are going to make sense. Um, and it's something that I, I do have to constantly remind myself of doing. There is a quote that goes, life is a performance without a dress rehearsal. This implies that nothing's planned. And like Asperger's, we want everything to be planned. Everything like this. It's got to be this, this, and this, this. And it doesn't happen. And that's scary. Very scary. And you just have to make the most of it. Even though at times with young people with autism, their instinct is to run away or hide and uh, avoid the social contact. But this is a real shame because if they don't socialise or, or go up to people and talk, they will never, ever, 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 ever know how fantastic these people really are. I am Tom Bowes and I have Asperger's Syndrome. Thank you very much.